So this week's project is not so much a theme as more uh, to do with the process of making a drawing or a painting. Building something up, um, pulling it back um, by smudging or scraping down and then bringing it to a conclusion uh, by the way in which you select from what uh, has been pulled back, what has been softened, smudged, scraped, and so on. So I'm going to work with our hanging violin, uh, which I think is, for me, is quite a nice subject because it's a little bit complicated, a little bit tricky to draw, but it is interesting, and there's some lovely light. So there's a certain atmosphere, a certain pathos as well, because the lad doesn't play it, play it anymore. But anyway, so I'm going to start by play, uh, um, drawing in charcoal, and I'm going to smudge my charcoal drawing, and then bring it out again. Then I'm going to do something in pastel, and then I'm going to work in oil paint. The whole business of subjects I'll maybe come to in the email, or um, I'll come back to a bit later in this this presentation. So I might just do a few lines to find the outline of my instrument. Look with my eyes half closed and see some of the shadows and darker shapes. There's a nice light side to this instrument that I want to bring out. So, as I said, this is about the process, and it's a process of making your drawing. Here I'm using charcoal on some um, watercolour white paper. And I'm drawing in earnest. I'm trying to do a good drawing. And then I'm going to knock it all back by smudging it. So I'm doing a little bit of smudging and uh, working things in. I like the shadow, that's a real part of the sort of atmosphere of the drawing. And I'm applying charcoal positively, but I'll also draw a bit with my rubber. As I say, I'm doing this in earnest. I'm not doing a bad drawing that I'm going to then just smudge and then do a better drawing. I want to do something that's well observed, but that is nonetheless a kind of foundation for something else. So this is maybe a difficult thing to assess how far you take this bit of the process. You'll just have to try it for yourselves a few times perhaps, before you get a feel for what I'm talking about. So go so far, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I'll go so far with my drawing like that. Take it that far, maybe do some of the extra bits like getting some light strings, some negative shapes, making the shadow a bit more atmospheric. So taking it so far, and then I think I'll, with this I'll just use my hand. And just take it away again. So what do we get? We get a kind of ghost of that image. I think with charcoal, it's quite nice actually to start with the negative shape. So subtracting with the eraser. And to this, to this, and this is a kind of charcoal rub away drawing, really. Although I've got a bit of a ghost of my instrument, I've also covered the page with some charcoal. And as you know, that's a good way of doing a drawing in charcoal. Cover your page with charcoal and um, then start to subtract a bit with the eraser. But I think already that's a more interesting drawing. It's not complete, but it has an atmosphere. We're talking a little bit about that, looking at some of the paintings, the neutral paintings last week. Um, 
the more restrained, restricted image is often more interesting, has a certain atmosphere. So the key thing is because I've knocked that back and I feel that there is a certain quality to it, what I do next is select certain things to bring out. And we're tired of hearing it, but you know who said, don't draw what you see, draw what you want others to see. And this is all about bringing out the things you want people to see. So in the case of my violin, I think it's got to be a lot to do with its beautiful form, but also the, the shadow that it casts on the wall and what kind of a, an atmosphere that creates. But ideally, through this process, when you come back to redraw, uh, and as I'm saying, to emphasize certain things, you'll do less. So I hate to um, remind you of political slogans, but I keep thinking of build back better. So maybe that's what you can think of. You take the drawing, you take the drawing so far and then you take it away and when you build it back it's better because you've selected the things, uh, you've, you've, you've got an atmosphere but also you've not over explained, over described um, your subject. You selected. So that's um, almost all, all I'll do in the charcoal. I, I obviously want to do more, but I hope that it might be enough just to illustrate as a starting point this, this idea. And then if I can do it in pastel and then in paint, hopefully there's enough there for whatever you want to, to work with yourselves. And I think I should just shape the shadow a little bit more. Because as I've said, that's what I'm interested in. I want to get a little bit more of the, the kind of violin shape. And of course I could just rub it all out again, smudge it again. Um, but no, let's leave that there. And I'll pause while I go on to some pastel. So I'm going to stick with the same subject and this time I'm using some chalk pastels. So I put down um, an orange, orange brown shape in to start. Uh, I could smudge that a bit, draw a few lines in and again as I said I think it it's important to draw in earnest to try and produce a good drawing not to sort of hold back but it can be I think especially when we get to paint it can be a bit painful scraping down something if you think it's good so yeah let's get a few things down So because I'm in colour, that's a bit of charcoal, just to get a dark, to get some of the black off the, the neck. A few colours already here. And yes, I think it's good to take things to, to the point of of detail, so we often talk about detail, how much detail to put in, and people worry about, quite rightly, about overworking their pictures. So this is all to do with that. How much detail do you want to put into a piece of work, and what detail do you select? The other thing, I suppose, I think it also relates to the 40 strokes business, 40 lashes. 
because um, it's about being economical. Because really, when you when you smudge, basically you're abstracting, you're bringing things together and uh, simplifying them. So yeah, it all it all ties together. Um, so that's is that enough there in pastel? Um, perhaps perhaps I should just do a little bit more defining. So some of these darker the darker edge to the instrument. I could. And we've all had this experience, you think, oh yes, it's looking rather nice and atmospheric, my drawing. And then you go and define a few more things because you're on a bit of a roll. And then you think, no, I've lost it. I had something. Uh, it was interesting. And now it's just obvious. So this could be for you. I think, I don't know why, but I've, I'm going to smudge this with a, a cloth rather than um, my hand. Maybe because my hand's not very clean anymore. But again, now we've got, I think, something a little bit more interesting. And I think like, because this is now, this is kind of middle, middle colour, middle tone. So I think to start with a certain amount of um, contrast, you know, putting on a bit of the lighter colours and the darker colours could be quite a good way. So this is... I'm using a bit of white for the wall, a bit of a negative shape again. I'm not sure if I've said this already, but the other point about you know, th this approach is, is simplifying, but it's also unifying. So when you smudge things like that, you bring them together and like the 40 strokes, like simplifying, uh, even like a restrictive palette, you've got something um, much more unified. And what I like about it at this point, and this is, this is key really, that once you've smudged it, you need to stand back and see what you've got. And what I like about it is how quiet it is. So before diving into the darker contrast, I think I'm going to carry on working in a slightly more subdued way. There is colour in the instrument, you know, the orange. But I'm going to bring that back with a slightly lighter touch. So I'm going to hold back on the very dark. And first I'm just going to see what some of these light colours do. Maybe a bit of a a rule of thumb would be when you do come back to the drawing, when you're building back better, expect to use less material. So I've got quite a lot of a kind of ground of colour in this drawing. For example, the body of the violin. I don't have to fill that in solidly. I can build it up a little bit smudge it, but maybe leave just some of this, the first layer to do a lot of the work. I will have to go to black or a dark grey, I think. But I'm just trying to be a little bit more considered about that. So that I try, see that's already a bit strong. Another grey. See, but bringing, bringing things out gradually. And if you know, if I know how to smudge it or scrape it back, the whole thing. If I do something that goes too far, well, I can just use the same approach. So I'm a little bit unsure now. I think I've been too tentative. I think I might want a bit more colour actually. 
fill that up a little bit more. Take that a bit further. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit better. Than we've got because I'm in colour now. It's a little bit more, a bit more involved. But I do want to hang on to that idea that I don't bring everything out. I have to remind myself what is it that's interesting. It's the lovely shape of the instrument, but also uh, relating that to its soft shadow. So that's what I've got to do. It's a little bit better, I think. Um, so yes, yeah, so and maybe actually i try a little bit of colour in the background. That might be quite good. Bring things together. So, that's possibly as much as I'm going to do with the pastel, which I hope has illustrated my point well enough. So it's working back in, into things, but trying to bring, bring them to a conclusion which in a way matches the, what you're trying to uh, capture. So taking the process back a stage, simplifying, abstracting, so that you can then rebuild it, but in a much more selective way. There we go. Okay. So I think I'll leave that there. Uh, I mean, it, it needs more time, needs more thought, and that's a point worth making, I think, that although you might be doing less at this stage, you will probably take just as long to do less because it should be a much more considered process. So I think rather than the black, I might want a dark brown. That might help. And I could also possibly get in some of the strings because it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid detail, but I'm trying to be much more selective about it. Okay, so I'll stop there with the pastel and I'm going to set up for a, a third demonstration just using the uh, using some oil paint. And rather than smudging, well I won't be smudging, but it's also called scraping down. So I'm now working in oil paint. I have, I'm working on canvas. I've tinted my canvas very slightly. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and I've sketched out my violin. I've pre-mixed a few colors. Um, so for example, something for the, um, the background, the wall, the negative shape, the things that I was doing a bit with pastel and charcoal. So I'm getting some paint on in earnest trying to paint it well, but getting enough paint on so that when I do my scraping, my smudging, something will really happen. So get some of that on, so, so you can see what I'm doing. I'll put a little bit of color on the violin, then I'll pause and um, paint a bit, and then scrape a bit. So let's see, what have we got? I get some of these colours in. I've mixed, I've pre-mixed three or four colours for the violin as it gets lighter and more colourful. Maybe just one more thing, just so 
that you can see how much paint I'm using. Because I think that's important when you scrape. If you don't put much paint on, then nothing really happens. When you scrape, the colours are smudged and they're brought together. Uh, but if there's not enough of them, none of that happens. Some of the light in here. Okay, so that I think that's just to illustrate my approach. So I'll pause while I do a bit more painting and then I'll scrape. So I've blocked in all the colour and worked with the shadow, which is part of what I'm interested in this uh, with this subject. So now I'm going to scrape down. So this is a brave thing to do. I mean, it's a bit easier with pastel and charcoal because you can throw together a drawing in a few minutes. Whereas you mix up color. Oh, I've just realized I haven't put the light, the light of the bow. Shall I do that? I think I probably should. Um, yes, yeah, so you've mixed up all this paint color. And now you're gonna just well, change it, lose it. I mustn't say destroy it because it's meant to be a positive thing. So I don't know why I'm letting you watch this shaky hand bit. Just want to get some light onto the that bit of the bow. Keep that clean. And then I'm going to do the scraping. Yeah, I mean, that matters because it's meant to be in earnest. So, scraping. I've got a palette knife. This is just a straight knife. You might have a trowel. I've got a rag as well because I think it's quite important to clean the knife along the way. I'm working on canvas, so this works best with canvas because the canvas has got a surface, a weave. And what I'm going to be doing is with my palette knife, um, uh, side on, straight on to the surface. So yeah, look, it's at a slight angle, but it's um, on the surface of the painting. And really I'm just pushing the paint into the weave like that. So a bit comes off on my knife, which I'll clean. That was the background, that was easy. Let's do the violin a bit now. So I'm only going so far because I want to push it into the weave, but not, not spread it around too much. So a lot of it is coming off, as happened with the pastel and the charcoal, but something is left behind. This ghost image, a lot of the edges, uh, well, yeah, the, the defined sharp edges are smudged now. So there's a lot of softening, definition taken away, maybe colours spread out in unexpected places. So if you like, there's something to tidy up, but it's the way in which you tidy up and it's seeing the potential in this softened version, the potential to bring things back. So for example, down here, some of that brown has gone into the background and that, that spoilt my nice, delicate shadow effect. So that's certainly something I'd work with. But there are other ways in which I think this has got a little bit more interesting because it's less defined, it's less, less obvious perhaps. So now I want to work back into it and more than likely because this is what I did before, it'll be some of these edges, the negative shape that I think I'll work with a bit, get that back. So 
some of those stray bits I don't think I want anymore. But as I do that, um, I want to work slowly now and really be aware of what to keep and what to lose. Not just tidy up and get it all back, but there are elements to this smudged version which I like and I think actually I'll get the the lighter bow I'll get that to start standing out fairly early on that might be a suggestion for how you approach this stage as I think I said with the pastel look for one or two lighter or sharper elements that you want that you're sure about that you want to stand out maybe do some of the lighter and some of the darker and then having established them you might find what's in the middle the mid tones or the middle colors a lot of them may be sufficiently addressed in um, in their smudged, scraped down version. Now, the other important thing is you've got to have enough paint uh, to go back in. So I'm going to pause while I mix a little bit more colour, particularly for the background. So I've made some more background colour and some more shadow colour because I think that's this is an area that I want to rework. So you need to have got enough paint on the painting for the scraping down to be uh, of any kind of significance because there's got to be paint to move around and then you've also got to have enough paint prepared when you come back and when you come back it's going to be very certain things that you choose to redefine so I think I want to get a little bit of light on this side, maybe even a slightly sharper edge in places. I think you can see these areas where I've scraped back to the canvas. You can see the weave of the canvas. On the email I gave you a link to the National Gallery on Princess Street and you can actually zoom in onto uh, a Degas painting, a study of a girl's head, uh, and you can zoom in and see the surface of the painting. So it's quite exciting to see that sort of detail. Uh, and you can certainly see areas where the canvas has been exposed because of the way he's scraped right back to it. So I suggest you have a good look at that because I think it's just a great illustration of what, what I'm talking about here. And scraping down was so, so, certainly something that Degas did a lot of. That's quite a surprising painting as well because the marks that you see when you get to that close-up level are not the obvious brush marks you would expect. They're much more varied, sometimes quite sort of wild. So I'm bringing out a little bit of definition there. With this, some of the darker marks, and it would be nice to have something over here, I think, as well. And then I'll just put a little bit of light on. I'm not sure actually about my light colour. I really should, should be remixing this. A bit too yellow. So I hope this is giving you some idea of what the point of scraping down would be. Um, those of you working in acrylic, there's a couple of things you can do. I know my children's art teacher, what she gets them to do with acrylic paintings 
is to run them under the tap, run them under the hot tap. So when your painting is dry, but you want to take this process further, well, you just run it under the hot tap and uh, maybe give it a rub with something. And some of the paint will come off and you'll get a kind of smudged version of, of your painting. The other thing you could do with acrylic, and I'll maybe just do it with my oil painting in a moment. Tiny bit more in there. Oh no, that wasn't a good idea. Just a little bit there. Maybe a bit of a yellower one. Because that's what's in this body a bit. Okay, yeah, so the other thing that you can do with acrylic uh, before it dries, is just have a rag and just just dab it a bit like that and then maybe turn over the rag and get a clean bit of rag so that you don't spread things around too much and just lift it off. You can also do this with oil um, as another way of moving things around a bit, softening things so that you've got a, a painting that you can then come back to and selectively move on. So, you know, I can come back to this again with a bit more background. And having lost some of those edges, I can get them back. Okay, so that's my a painted demonstration of scraping down. I'd mentioned also about the whole business of themes, what will you paint, but I think that would be a thing to tackle separately. So I'll put this in the email, but I'm going to suggest that maybe we have a separate conversation, those who want, about themes, and I might get you to review some of your paintings from the last weeks and months and choose a few that you're particularly happy with, and then we'll have a conversation about some themes for you and um, it would be good if you were able to approach some of these projects like scraping down uh, but with also with your own particular threads themes that you're trying to follow so I'll put that in the email and we'll have that as a slightly separate process running alongside these weekly projects okay so it might be good to see some maybe some smudge charcoal and smudge pastel uh, studies tomorrow. You might even have had a go at scraping down something, um, but we'll have a look at those on Monday. Okay. Bye-bye.